Now, P Peter Smith will tell you about uh, some latest imaging. <clears throat> On the fourth Martian day, uh, the monster pan, so called for its huge volume of data, came back to Earth. Our image processing team, stretched to their limits, has processed into color the middle two tiers of what will be a four-tier panorama. Um, this shows the terrain that Sojourner will travel in over the next few weeks. And looking beyond the, uh, the panorama looks just beyond the edge of the lander petals and goes out about 15 or 20 feet. And we can explore it together, looking at the rocks and the soil and imagining the rover traversing along this pathway. And we'll find out as it happens exactly what path it decides to, she decides to take. And if I can have the video, imagine the rover going around this scene. You'll notice some of the data was lost in transmission and gives these peculiar colors. This will be recovered. Now we're looking just over the rover pedal. Here comes the rover. This is before it got to Barnacle Bills. This was in the position it first uh, left the lander. Of course, in the background is Yogi. You may have to help me here. I'm having trouble remembering all the rock stars. Uh, <laughs> I'm terrible with these names. Are you bringing us in now? Casper, yes. Um, we're we're uh, watching sort of a, a these new pictures right of, uh, of Mars coming in. And, and John Holloman, I, I noticed that as soon as these came up, you walked right up. You know, you're like a child in front of the television set looking at these new pictures. These are really spectacular. Well, I've been waiting for two days to see this picture, Susan. I'll just tell you. I, you know, I don't know what it means exactly, but Peter Smith does, and he's telling us. And uh, I've been told to expect great things from here. There's a little antenna that uh, has a, a camera up at the top of it on the, uh, on the lander. And that's the lander itself you're seeing in this pan as it, uh, as it rolls around there, part of the weather station on the lander. Uh, everybody was surprised that the high temperature on Mars yesterday was 10 degrees above zero. They thought it was going to be 10 degrees below zero, which means the equipment up there is going to be uh, going to last much longer because it's uh, just 20 degrees warmer weather than they expected. We've got several other people standing by. Um, in addition to you, John Holloman, and Donna Shirley, uh, she's the NASA program manager, uh, John Zarella, who is out in Pasadena, California, at uh, JPL, and we're going to start, can we bring those guests in now, or should we wait? Okay, we're going to go ahead and bring them now, and, and Donna, welcome. In advertising... Really? <laughs> Have me glued to the television when you said Barnacle Bill is not what we thought he was, uh, but right. you'll have to wait. Isn't that part of it, the volcanic activity in Barnacle Bill? Yes, but uh, this kind of uh, volcanic activity is called andesitic activity, and it's like the Andes Mountains, and it's like Mount St. Helens, where things blow up uh, instead of where things kind of dribble out the way they do in Hawaii. So uh, this is not... This doesn't look like stuff that would have come out of Mount Olympus because it's a shield volcano like Mauna Kea. Mm -hmm. Question for you from David, who's in our audience. David, go ahead. Um, why did they name the Ross after um, cartoon characters? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's because scientists are pretty funny people, and, uh, and they just thought that would be cool. And if they used numbers like ALH84001, uh, they would not remember what they were talking about, but if they call them names that remind them of things, then it's easy for them to remember uh, what those are. When you say Yogi, everybody knows what you're talking about. Um, especially the vision of the couch, because it really does look like a couch, you know, or yes. Casper, or any of these things. Sarah, you've got a right, question. Right. Speaking of, of incomprehensibles, go ahead. What exactly is the Alpha Proton X-ray Spectrometer? <laughs> Okay, it's called an Alpha Proton X-ray Spectrometer, and it's an instrument that actually emits little subatomic particles, the, the, uh, the, molecule, the, the uh, interior of atoms, without any electrons around it, is, is the nucleus. And it, and it pings the nucleus of helium atoms against the rock, and those penetrate the atoms in the rock, and either they're bounced back as alpha particles, or they're absorbed, and then a proton, which is just one little piece of, uh, of nuclear matter, 
is emitted, or an X-ray, which is uh, like what goes uh, through your bones when you're getting an X-ray. And there's a detector that detects the alpha protocol, the particles, the protons, and the X-rays. And the amount of those things that come back into the detector is different for each kind of element. And so that's how they measure what these different elements are. As we're looking at these spectacular pictures of the uh, surface of Mars from the monster pan, monster meaning huge, uh, huge pan of the surface hey, can there. I, can I interrupt yeah. to tell you something? The wind sock that's telling the wind speed and direction is now hanging down from this live picture that they're beaming us down right now. And it appears uh -huh. that it is dead calm. If we wanted to uh, parachute in there, we wouldn't have any wind to blow us around. It's kind of, I don't know if you can see it, it's hanging from that mast just to the right of center of your screen. Uh, and speaking of weather, we've got a young man in our audience. Kevin, hold up your hand. Candace, go to Kevin. Kevin, you've got a question about the weather. Yes, I was wondering if there were any storms on Mars, and if there were, how would the probe go about protecting itself from them? Well, Donna, there are dust... Go ahead, Donna. There dust, okay, there are dust storms on Mars, and we can see those right now with the Hubble Space Telescope all the way from Earth. And Vikings saw them, and Mariner 9 in 1971 saw them. Those dust storms, though, are not like storms on Earth because the atmosphere of Mars is so thin, it's only 1% as thick as the Earth's atmosphere. So the winds aren't very strong, and they don't have much density to support uh, a lot of dust. So the dust that they pick up is the same consistency as tobacco smoke. It's very, very thin. So the winds, if you, at 100 miles an hour, it's like holding your hand out the car when you're going 10 miles an hour. There's just not much force there, so we're not at all worried about storms hurting the spacecraft. We want to bring John Zarella in. John, a uh, gentleman in our audience, uh, works at NASA Dryden. It's about 65 miles or so from where you're stationed. He works where the shuttle lands, so he's got a question for you. Go ahead. Yeah, what's the anticipated length of time that the uh, probe will be able to collect the data? Well, the scientists have told us that the, the mission had to have a beginning and an end, so it was about a week for the uh, for the sojourner and about six months for the lander but they expect the way the performance is right now that it could go on for a lot lot longer it could go on for up to six months the uh, the rover and the lander for perhaps at least a year uh, earth year I mean, then they at least a couple more seasons on mars before they get into winter and at that point it gets a little iffy right donna that right then the batteries may be wearing right. down and yeah in fact uh... there's nothing particularly uh... to kill the either the lander or the rover because they're both solar powered uh... until maybe it gets so cold that they freeze or that the heat thought the cold hot cycles during the day make the little solder joints work like bending a coat hanger and, and expansion them. all the time. So if it doesn't break, it'll probably live until the winter, which is a few months. Because their year is a lot longer than our year. Right. So they have longer spring, longer summer. Right, twice as much. And since the uh, orbit of Mars is much more elliptical, much more egg-shaped than the orbit of Earth, the seasons are much more extreme. Uh, we are going to take a break at this point. Um, Donna, thank you so much for really making this come to life for so many people, the science. Uh, our audience, I've got to tell you, is really jazzed up, and it's a pleasure to have uh, the opportunity to ask questions directly of you. So we're going to take a break. More of these questions after this.